So this is the uh, layout for the uh, back panel on the uh, aerial. So this is for the uh, battery compartment. Then this is a earth socket here, just for putting in earth. The output to the radio will be here. The uh, a straight wire aerial can go in here so that you can bypass this whole thing. Or a uh, coax aerial. So these are two inputs. An earth and an output and power. Okay, so there's the back panel cut out. Um, the panel is a bit sort of dented and stuff. Uh, it got damaged in transit. I figured I'll just carry on because this will be around the back. It won't make any difference. Okay, so here we go. Um, so this is going to be the true earth. Uh, the wire aerial in, coax aerial in, these will be just joined together and this is going to be the output off to the radio. Um, this is the battery compartment and uh, it's not fixed in yet um, because these normally you just put a couple of really small wood screws in here because this would typically go into wood um, and it's they're smaller than M3 so I don't know if I'd be able to find some uh, Countersunk nuts, sorry, countersunk bolts uh, with nuts that'd be uh, less than three mil. Um, so if I can find them, I'll use them. Um, so I'll go have a look in the hardware store. If not, I'll just run some hot glue all around. Uh, and since it's not going to be under a huge amount of stress, and uh, that should hold it. Uh, and then I'll rough it up, give it a bit of probably a coat of black, and that'll be that. Back panel done. Yeah, finding all the controls and the uh, selector switch uh, turned out to be just a little bit of a challenge because uh, this here is like a 1k log pot. Uh, you'd be surprised how hard it is to find a 1k pot these days that you can panel mount. And this is a 1k linear, 47k lin, and 10k lin. So, um, so I'm just laying them out to see if I equally space them. Uh, well, they fit okay. What's it all gonna look like when it's done up? But I think we're good. They look e reasonably equally spread across the front. Um, the actual documentation uh, article on the project has clearly got different types of prototypes uh, in the different photos. So uh, I'm gonna go with this because in the actual photo, the selector switches in here. And I thought, I don't see any logic in putting the on-off switch, which effectively is what this is, one in from the end. I mean, I think it's far more logical to have it at the end, and then have all the controls. Um, anyway, um, let's see how this goes. Okay, so this is the front panel uh, mock-up. Um, one of the things I'm going to need to get, I think, is some more nuts to go around these... Um, these threaded portions of the pots because they're all different lengths sticking out. Um, so to get it so that the knobs when you put them on are all nice and level, I'm gonna probably need to uh, take some of these pots back a bit, um, etc, etc. Like this one sticks out a lot, these two stick out a lot versus the other, etc. Anyway, so I'll get that done. Um, and just so I don't forget, I just marked them all with their circuit designation and what their value is on the back here so that if I'm taking them in and out I'll know which ones go back where <laughs> so this is what it looks like this is sort of upside down so everything will be fixed to the top and then you just screw on the uh, the bottom half of the case um, so basically to get at it and troubleshoot it you just take the bottom off and uh, everything is there so uh, there's the plane. Uh, so I went looking around my junk box to find some knobs and uh, it's a little bit of a collection but hey the colors did not freak me out. What's freaking me out is like one of these pots is smaller than the other ones and so I gotta go change that it's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> but yeah that's basically the layout. Uh, Q multiplier uh, coarse tune, fine tune, output and on, off, uh, sorry, off, wire and loop. Dum, da, dum. And on the back, as we've seen before. So here we have the uh, B7 
PCB image printed on glossy paper. I did a, uh, a mask as well. I'm not sure if I'll use it, but we'll see. Uh, and here's a cleaned up circuit board. So I'll see if I can use an iron and get that on here. Uh, quick update, guys. So um, strike one on this uh, hot ironing process to uh, transfer the uh, uh, etching pattern onto the copper. Um, <coughs> I um, prepared this on glossy paper, put it on here, put a uh, an iron on medium heat on here. The paper immediately stuck to the bottom of the iron. Um, so I got like some sort of gunge that's come from this paper all over the uh, plate of the iron. <laughs> and I left it on here for a long time. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, well, it didn't really work. Um, so uh, I think we're going to abandon this at least for now and uh, try the photographic process because um, I know that when I used to do this in the past I used to use the photo resist stuff um, and so I think I'll uh, I'll try that out next obviously there's glossy paper and glossy paper um, and whatever is on this glossy paper there's some sort of uh, I guess plastic film on the back of it here uh, I don't know, um, didn't work out, um, however just scrounging around for materials I have a bunch of that cherry left over from when I um, did the project on uh, making a new lid for that capacitor uh, tester and so this is certainly going to be enough to build uh, the housing that all the ferrite rods are going to go in and as for what goes underneath, uh, I'll figure that out later. Um, so yeah, <coughs> uh, not sure what happened here, um, <laughs> but uh, let's try something different. Okay, so here's my first go at the actual coil assembly. Um, so I managed to get nine rods into the tube. It's not very elegant because with nine you end up with like air spaces. But I don't know what the hell, I'll use them. And I just put some wooden spaces in between to keep everything rigid so that the um, the ferrite rods wouldn't be moving about. <clears throat> and sure enough it says the more um, the more ferrite rods you put in the less turns you need on the secondary here. And so... Uh, <clears throat> The diagram says with seven rods you have 29 turns. Uh, that gave me way too much inductance. Uh, the, th the thing says you need to be about 160 microhenries. Um, so I found by I had to get, remove three turns and get it down to 26 turns, and then I'm just over the 160. So hopefully that'll do. So. The only thing I wasn't sure of, and I don't know if it's important or not, is there's nothing in the in the instructions that tell you whether or not these are wound in the same direction and whether it makes any difference. I mean, this is only one turn, so I guess it can't really make a difference. But you never know with these things, so um, I guess I'll find out when I uh, fire it up and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so far so good. So the next thing to do is um, just make all the wiring here safe. So with plenty of little bits of glue here so that these uh, things are not going to be coming undone. And then see about building the box to put it in. Okay, so here is the uh, ferrite uh, coil assembly all dressed up. Um, so the start of the uh, Secondary goes to the start of the primary and then you have the two uh, ends of each coil which go off to the circuit board and the common in the center and the inductance is 170 microhenries so close enough to the 160 I reckon for the purposes of what I'm doing here One thing I will say this thing weighs a ton it's extremely heavy, so uh, the tilt mechanism is going to have to be pretty robust. So this is where I got to as far as the uh, circuit etching is concerned. Uh, since the ironing method 
it was a complete flop for me and it took me an hour to clean the bloody iron um, <laughs> so here we go uh, so here is the, um, the mask uh, ready for the photo developing um, and uh, the reason there's two of them on here is um, because the circuit boards are uh, 10 by 15 centimeters so I figured I'll get two of them and if anybody else wants one later on to be more than welcome um, <laughs> made a little mess up here when I was ordering the uh, photosensitive boards because I thought I'll get two of them just in case I screw up and what arrived is two packets of five so <laughs> I should pay more attention when I'm ordering on websites <clears throat> my excuses in this part of the world are mostly in a foreign language but still uh, so I got plenty of <laughs> circuit boards now okay so that's kind of where we're at and there's going to be a pause now because my vacation starts officially tonight yeah so far so good uh, for me this type of project is if, if I'm not learning stuff then it gets really boring <coughs> so uh, I'm certainly learning as we go here the reason I'm kind of stopped here is the uh, the folks that supplied me all the you know the photosensitive boards and the film and everything else and the etching fluid they had everything except the developing fluid so I had to order that up from somewhere else uh, which is going to take probably a couple of days so it'll probably arrive while I'm on the road who knows um, okay so there we go guys um, more when I get uh, back online <laughs>